A second place finish and a fantastic offensive output marked our last season. We've got a massive summer transfer window coming up as this year FC Porto looks to win it all. And welcome back, everyone, to episode number 131 of Bottom to the Top. I am Mr. Cellophane. It is time for our season review and summer transfer window as we look ahead into season number three at FC Porto. A pretty decent year for us. Could have been better in certain respects. I'm looking at you, Manchester United. But all in all, very happy with where we were in our first season, our first full season, I should say, at the helm here at Porto with lofty goals for next year. Now, those are goals we set for ourselves. The board would be happy with just making the Champions League again and making a good account of ourselves in that particular competition. We, however, would like to sit at the top of the table of the Liga Portugal. We're going to get to that and how we're going to get there in just a little bit, but taking a look back at last year, again, a second place finish, our signing of the season, no surprise. Gershke Akar, we picked him up for $93 million from Hoffenheim. Now, some people were like, you spent a lot of money on one player, and we most certainly did. However, his output was just fantastic. He made a grand total of 42 appearances, 38 of them starts for us in all competitions. 18 goals, 18 assists. You may remember it took him a little while to find his goal-scoring boots, but once he did, he was absolutely fantastic. The 22-year-old right winger. I know it says there that he is a striker. We've been playing him at right wing to great success. A 7.59 average rating across the season. In fact, you see on the screen... Quite a bit of green. We also brought in the 21-year-old striker Armando for 11 and a quarter million from Brazil. 46 appearances, 26 goals, 15 assists. Gonzalo Perez from, I believe, Argentina, if I'm not mistaken. 6.25 million, 25 starts. He scored 17 goals for us, added six assists. It's amazing we got the production we did out of our strikers because we have four strikers that were essentially rotating in and out and all of them scored if I'm not mistaken 17 or more goals also one of my favorite players uh it took us a while to realize his value but 19 year old Peruvian Cesar Ventura cost us just 1 million from Universitario he made 23 starts 33 overall appearances seven goals 14 assists for the youngster, he's going to factor into our midfield quite heavily in this coming season. Diogo Ferreira was our backup goalkeeper. We spent $3 million on him. We got him from a league opponent in Visso. Made 13 appearances, a pair of assists for him as well. He also kept, I believe, seven or eight clean sheets throughout the season. Daniel Zungu, $35 million from RSC Anderlecht as our starting left winger, the 27-year-old. 31 starts. Uh, he was injured for, for a bit of the season, managed five goals, nine assists. I think we can get a little bit more out of the position this year. Alex Von Riel was his primary backup, the 19-year-old. Uh, we got him from Sparta Rotterdam for $6.25 million. Made 32 appearances in the year, only 12 starts, four goals, six assists. Pedro Iglesias, well, we all know where he came from. We got him from Arsenal, who got him from Fulham, who signed him as an 18-year-old out of Uruguay. We paid $11 million for him, uh, no goal contributions. He did make 13 starts for the club. David Zambrano, backup left winger, also from Fulham Football Club, $6.75 million. Maybe we overpaid a little bit for him. He made uh, tw uh, 23 appearances, added one goal and nine assists. Ignacio Fernandez, bit of a disappointment, $9 million from Lanús, uh, 24 appearances overall, just three assists for him. We brought Simon Jenkins in on loan from Manchester City, looking at potentially bringing him in 
permanently, but his salary demands are rather lofty. He's only making like 35 grand at Man City. He wants like 150 here. We are not willing to pay that much, especially for a fullback. 12 starts, 13 overall appearances, added three assists. Radic Vitek was our starting goalkeeper. Got him from Juve for 10.75 million. He made 43 starts for us. He was he was okay. He he was he wasn't great. He was also in goal during the 6-1 second leg drubbing at Old Trafford. So that was pretty much the end of the road for him here. Manuel Espinosa got him from Chivas for 11 million. Uh, the center back only made seven appearances for the club. And Gabriel Gianfi in on loan from Fulham, just looking for an additional midfielder as we had moved a few out on loan uh, to get further development. Uh, five appearances he did manage to score one goal for the club. As far as the outgoings, we did uh, make a little bit of money. We parted ways with our former captain, Mike Klein, the 31-year-old defensive midfielder. We kind of didn't really need the role as we moved into the 4-2-4. We got $30 million for him from Al Ali. Alvaro Rodriguez went to Al Idihad for $68 million. Ended up scoring 28 goals with 11 assists, but that production we were able to replace for a lot less money, so still good business. Uh, Leandro Barrientos, youngster we weren't going to really use. Antonio Nusa, don't even remember playing him. Uh, he was with us at the end of last year. I think he was our starting right winger. Uh, we did pretty pretty well with replacing him. Did manage 20 goals, 15 assists for Al Hilal, but 40 million helped pay for his replacement. Savio went to Al Ali. We sent a lot of players to uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, didn't we? 36.5 million for the 32 year old, made 55 appearances for them, scoring 28 goals with 16 assists. Uh, Gustavo Villasanti, we just weren't using him. He was a backup to a backup. 29 million, only managed two starts for Sunderland in the Premier League with one assist. Gui Catal did not want to necessarily part with him, but when the offer came in from Al Fateh for 46.5 million, he was like, uh, yeah, I really want to go there. So convince me otherwise. And we were like, yeah, we're not going to play that game. So we ended up selling him. He was our captain at the time. Made the same decision with Sean Smith, sending him to Barcelona for $45 million. 23 starts, three substitute appearances, one goal, one assist. And the rest, not really uh, not really much to talk about. Uh, Jorge Meza, he was just being problematic. He was our backup right wing. He just kept rumbling and grumbling about playing time. He wasn't doing all that great. Probably could have gotten more than the $12.5 million we did from FC Cologne, but it is what it is. The board wanted us to qualify for the Champions League, and that is exactly what we did, finishing in second place. 26 wins in 34 matches, but Benfica, with just the lone loss to Boa Vista, ended up taking the league by eight points. That is our goal, to make up those points. Also, do a little bit better against Sporting Braga. We lost to them twice in the regular season. They represented two of our five losses but second place not too shabby not perfect we did well in the champions league as well making it to the quarterfinals we all know what happened against manchester united in the portuguese cup it was uh, benfica ultimately winning the competition we made it to the semi-finals we lost obviously to sporting braga i think we lost four of five matches from braga or three of four we have to do better against our rivals next time. And in the Allianz Cup, we were the runners up. We ended up losing to, you guessed it, Benfica. Our biggest win of the year came in the last episode, beating Estrella Amadora 8 to 2, a pair of goals each for Gershke Akar and Cesar Ramos, Martinez, Cunha, Armando, and Cesar Ventura each adding one as well. The match to remember, a 3-2 victory in the Champions League over Manchester City. It was that win that guaranteed us a spot straight into the round of 16. And the goal of the season went to Gershke Akar.
And whenever I pull these up, I wonder if this was one of those that I said at the time, that's a goal of the season candidate. It was a car from the edge of the box, Daisy Cutter, inside the far post. We ended up winning that match against FC Michelin in the Champions League 4-1. to one, All of the goals coming in the second half. That was actually the goal that put us ahead to one. Financially, not too bad. Down a little bit on sponsorship and in broadcast revenue, as well as competition prize money, which is a little surprising. I'm not sure. I'll have to check to see how Porto did in the Champions League before, in you know the year that we ended up taking over after they had already been eliminated. Match day, commercial and retail, and corporate and hospitality all up. We sold 10.7 million euros worth of merchandise this year. Almost uh, 430,000 shirts. Gershke Akar leading the way. Ramos, Zungu, Gustavo, and Nino Aklin rounding out the top five shirt sellers. Our best 11 does highlight two of the weaknesses on the team that we are going to be looking to shore up this season. Radic Vitek in goal with a 6.85 average rating. Now, uh, Ferreira did have a much better rating, but a smaller sample size, of course. Also at left back where Sandro just managed a 6.77, a pair of assists for him in 35 appearances. The rest of the back line, Agui Catau, uh, Martinez, Sebastian Martinez, and Cunha with Ventura and Acklin in the midfield. Zungu and Akar on the wings with Ramos and Armando, our two best strikers, according to this. Just one Manager of the Month award for Nick Bottom, but the fans player of the season, Gershke Akar, also the young player of the season, signing of the season, goal of the season. So Akar, again, confirming his value. Yes, $93 million was still quite a lot of money. Armando was our top goal scorer with 26 goals. Assists went to uh, Akar with 18. Also won eight Man of the Match awards with the highest average rating on the team. Pedro Iglesias with the most passes completed per 90 minutes. Gershke Akar, as we highlighted in the last episode, set the new season record for Porto with assists in the season with 18. Also, record high transfer fee paid of $92.54 million. And oh yes, Gonzalo Perez won the Next Gen Award. Cesar Ventura and Sebastian Martinez rounded out the top three. We have the best youth core in all of football. And this hurts. That 6-1 loss to Manchester United just also happened to be our 600th match managed. Not a way that we wanted to celebrate. The Champions League is done and dusted for another year. Real Madrid on their way to a treble won the competition. They beat Barcelona, so it was an all-Spanish final. Real Madrid in the semifinals knocked off Manchester United and took care of the business that we failed to. However, Football Club de Porto was named the biggest overachievers of the competition. We thrilled everyone with our performance in reaching the quarterfinal, where, of course, we lost to Manchester United. Hopefully, something that we do not repeat next year. Uh, we'll be the overachievers. Uh, just hopefully we don't repeat that 6-1 second leg loss to Man U. I'm still sore over it. I'm sorry. And it was a hell of a month for Gershke Akar picking up the Champions League Young Player of the Season. The Liga Portugal Player of the Month for the month of May. Cesar Ventura coming in third place in that one. He also scooped up the Young Player of the Month in the league and the Forward of the Month. We also got the Manager of the Month as we finished off the season on a six-game winning streak. So... More silverware all around, at least on a monthly basis. Oh, wait, did I say it was Gershke Akar? I apologize. The forward of the month was Cesar Ramos. Well, we got noticed we are doing so well financially that we have paid off a very large portion of the club's debts. In fact, our net debt currently is at zero, about 35 million in transfer debt, but you know, that's 
for future years. That's a future cellophane problem. So we have asked the board for a couple of things. The first is being enacted as we speak. Six and a quarter million euros to improve our club's youth facilities currently at an 18. So we have very good training in youth facilities. They can both use a little work. We just upgraded the training facilities very recently. So unfortunately, that is not currently an option. We have also asked for an expansion to our stadium. Now, we averaged about 96% attendance throughout the year, so that may not be good enough for the board to out, uh, make that outlay, but hopefully they will. If we can get more butts in the seats, we can get more money and continue to improve and be not only one of the best clubs in Portugal, but one of the best clubs in all of Europe. We have a couple of goals in this transfer window. The first is to bring in world-class players, particularly along our defensive line. Uh, left back, right back, we could use some improvement. And obviously, we've already talked about bringing in a center back to pair with Sebastian Martinez. Although Felipe Lopez has potential, he's also homegrown at Porto. So keeping him around for things like the Champions League is probably going to be high on our priority list. Also, goalkeeper and left wing we've already got a prospect for left wing that i think we're going to be bringing in so that is very exciting we will talk about that when we can actually start to make signings the transfer window is not yet open we're still in early june now we have 132 million euros with which to work that may not be enough to cover as many positions we have now the second goal we have is to pare down our squad uh, there are a number of players that we have around that just did not see a ton of playing time. Guys like Yol Chol, who are already moving out. Um, we're going to be taking a look at, you know, the excess midfielders and potentially strikers we have. Now, Cesar Ramos is not in that category. However, the 27-year-old paid $9.5 million for him. His value is around $50 million now. If we were to sell him, that could go a long way to help fund all of the other things we need. We've talked ad infinitum about how we have a number of amazing strikers in this squad. I mean, he managed 25 goals last year in all competitions. 15 in the league, 3 in the Champions League, 6 in 5 matches in the Portuguese Cup, and 1 in the Allianz Cup. We are not actively going to try to sell him, but there are currently almost a dozen squads that are interested in his service uh, across Europe, primarily in England. So maybe we will be able to get a premium for him if the right offer comes in for the 27-year-old Mexican international. Another player beginning to garner quite a bit of interest is 21-year-old midfielder Andre Martens. Now, he played very well for us, surprisingly so, if I must say, garnering a 7.05 rating in all competitions, a couple of assists in the Champions League, only two goals, six assists in all competitions. He was sharing time as we rotated in and out trying to find the, the right people. Now, Nino Acklin playing very well last year as our right central midfielder meant that Cesar Ventura, who kind of plays that same position, spent a lot of time in the latter half of the season playing where Martens would. Now, Martens just became homegrown, so that is something we need to consider. But again, $1.6 million to bring him in originally, worth about 15 now, seeing interest from sides in France and Germany. So keeping in the back of our mind that he may be another player that will help fund the rebuild we need to do on our backside. Oh, baby, plans are afoot to expand the Estadio do Dragao. 56,666 is the proposed provisional capacity. It's going to cost about 46 million euros, money that we don't necessarily want to part with, but the board agreed that attracting as many fans as possible will be a good thing. So the work is going to begin to expand the stadium immediately. It should be done by July of 2037, just 13 months from now. Well, my friends, it appears that all of our good works at FC Porto, all of the positive things that we are doing, 
has begun to garner notice around the footballing world because Paris Saint-Germain have invited Nick Bottom to apply for their vacant manager position. Now, you may be wondering, why does PSG have an open job? Is it not a desirable place to go anymore? Oh, no, it still very much is is 179 million euros in the bank, a profit of nearly 200 million, 107 million remaining in the budget, a wage budget of 7.8 million, meaning 1.65 million remaining in the wage budget. And uh, you may be wondering what happened to their manager because they came in first place in Ligue 1. Well, that's because a Saul left after two plus years to take over at Manchester United. In fact, PSG ended the season in Ligue 1, the same place they've ended every season since 2021, 2022, and that is at the top of the table. 86 points, 27 victories in 34 matches, just the two losses. Bit of work to do in Europe, however, as they were knocked out by Bayer Leverkusen in the round of 16 in the Champions League. So that is a finish. Should we get the job? We are going to interview for the job. How do you turn down one of the greatest clubs in all of the world when they come a-knocking? You just don't. Interview is going well. A few things that I've been able to glean from this. Not surprisingly, they would want me to continue to win League Un. I'm not going to say that that's going to be an easy thing to do, but I'm sure that PSG has a solid foundation considering they've won 15 years in a row at this point. But I've also learned that PSG plans on building a new stadium, which means they will be replacing the Parc de Princes. So now that that is out of the way, we just need to make sure that we don't get in our own way, jeopardize our current position at Porto, should we not move to PSG, or jeopardize our chances of making the move to PSG. Either way, I myself personally will be happy wherever I end up. I was a little curious, and I am not the front runner or the favored candidate for the PSG job, even though when they offered me the invitation to interview with them, they said I was one of their top candidates. In fact, the massive odds on favorite, 1 to 91 odds, is Thomas Tuchel, the Crypt Keeper, having just recently been fired by Manchester United. So wouldn't it be very interesting if Tuchel and Saul swapped places? I think what would be even more interesting would be Tuchel not getting the job and then giving it to us, and maybe he ends up at Porto? Well, what can I say? The path to hell is paved with good intentions, and I had fantastic intentions for this season, but I believe for the next part of the video, I'm going to need to change my shirt, for the deed has been done. In a move which is sure to spark plenty of heated debate, Nick Bottom has left FC Porto to join PSG. Bottom, who of course most famously lifted the Emirates FA Cup with Fulham in 2032, will face pressure to bring immediate success to the Parc de Princes for as long as the Parc de Princes is around. Having stepped up from his previous standing to take sole charge and will need to hit the ground running if he's to win over those who believe his appointment was a questionable decision. I really wish that they had more options for this screen because I feel like there's like two or three variations on what this says. Arnie Slot was considered to be the favorite for the job. Actually, that was Thomas Tuchel. Although, I think, so Tuchel was wanted by another club in France. I think that may be where he ended up. Maybe he turned down PSG. Or he took the other job before PSG had a chance to get around to him. Either way, it doesn't matter. This is where we are now. FC Porto is going to be looking for a new manager. Maybe it'll be Thomas Tuchel. We are planning on bringing over some staff from Porto with us. In fact, quite a number of staff. There were a lot of holes that needed to be filled in PSG, including Virgil van Dyke and a few of the guys that have come with us in our last 
few stops. So we are very excited to get going. Remember, this team has won League Un for the last 15 years in a row, and we do not plan on breaking that trend. Not surprisingly, the media predicted them to finish first this past season, which obviously they did. I'm sure we will be predicted to finish first next year as well. We are moving out of the Parc de Prance, but not this season. It's going to be June 2039 that the new PSG Stadium with a capacity of nearly 65,000 will be completed. So we're going to be at the Parc de Prance for the next couple of years. And hopefully they are the success where we need them to be. Last year, obviously winning Ligue 1, runners-up in the Trophée des Champions, and also knocked out in the semifinals of the Coupe de France, we must improve there as well. Now, this job is going to give us the opportunity to work with some guys that we've wanted to in the past. You're going to recognize some of these names. We haven't even gotten to the full squad. This is just their idea of our Best 11 is going to be De, uh, De Luis in goal. Nuno Mensch still playing in the league here in 2036-2037. He is the left back. Goes Dimitro Tarasenko. Remember him? We thought that we were going to be signing him at Fulham, and he went to PSG instead. Also, Siuka is a player that I've been looking at for quite some time. Now, his wage demands didn't really fit in to where Porto wanted to be, but he slotted in at right back. I believe he's also a very competent center back as well and great young player. In the midfield, Gregor Muirhead, another player we thought we were going to get at Fulham. He opted to go to Spurs instead. Now, he's at PSG and to Fatty on the right wing so we've got a lot of talent to work with we're going to see who's going to stay who's going to go and who's coming in this surprises me a little bit they have changed their expectations of us for next year this coming season they want us to reach the latter stages of the champions league which i think we should be able to do we have the budget to do so also, to just qualify for the Champions League, the league winning expectation does not start until next year. Now, obviously, that is our personal goal because we expect nothing less at Paris Saint-Germain. But it's good to know that if we were to stumble in our first season, that the board would not necessarily be looking to replace us immediately. So out of curiosity... I decided to take a look at the last starting 11 for PSG. And I'm greeted with a 4-4 flipping 2. Probably not the formation that we are going to use, but I don't know. Time will tell. Now, you will notice that uh, Gianluigi Donnarumma is listed as the goalkeeper, but he was not in the team report when we first joined. The reason being, he is actually retiring in a month. Now, Nuno Mensch is 33 years old right now. Uh, Javi Simons is 33 years old right now. Probably going to be looking to move those two on. I haven't even looked at to see how old Ansu Fadi is, but he's probably in that same general area. Kelly O'Malley, is he a good enough central midfielder? Ivan Fresneda, remember him from Fulham? He's our current right back or our most recent right back. Obviously, Dimitro Tarasenko, we are excited to have him on the team. That's the kind of player I wanted to get in at Porto to be my center back. But, of course, he wanted too much money, even though we could have afforded him. We were trying to be fiscally responsible. I'm very glad to have him here. I'm very glad to see Gregor Muirhead here. Torcado is one of our key players. Why they have him on the wing? I don't know. He's probably better suited as a striker. But we do have a lot to work with, but there are areas of improvement that we can find. Muirhead does look to be every bit the player that we expected him to be when we initially tried to sign him. I cannot believe he went on loan to Spurs with the option to buy instead of just coming straight to Fulham. But it is what it is. Central midfield, he basically can play anywhere up the attacking spine of the team. Excellent passing, beautiful vision. His technique is fantastic. A nice soft first touch, and his finishing is spectacular. Don't love uh, his personality. can be a little fickle, 
but as a world-class player, very consistent, highly skilled, love having him on the squad. And sometimes I have to admit when my first impression may have been wrong, but maybe Dimas Torcado is the left wing that we would have been looking for. 66 caps for Portugal in his career. The 26-year-old is a crossing machine. Only nine goals, nine assists in Ligue 1 last year. Ten goals, ten assists in all competitions. So it's just slightly better offensively than Daniel Zungu was. Five foot eight, a little bit on the diminutive side, but he's agile, he's fast, and he is absolutely <laughs> fantastic his offensive positioning is pretty much off the charts tremendous amount of value he was plucked out of the second tier in portugal a number of years ago from Firenze. 12.5 million paid for him he's worth over 300 million now i mean he could if he wasn't so good in my opinion and he wasn't most likely going to be our starting winger, and it looks like we are going to be gravitating towards another wing-based system, either a 4-3-3. Uh, we might stick with a 4-2-4 for all I know. We still have to take a look, see what we have, especially in the striking department, although I do understand that there are a few very high-quality strikers that may be available from a certain Portuguese club. So who knows? So there are moves that are potentially able to be made. But if we need a left wing, we already have one. Joining Muirhead in the midfield is Kieran O'Malley. And the fans absolutely love this guy. 27 years old. He's capped 29 times for jolly old England. Six goals, four assists in the league last year. Another world-class quality player. He's got that. He reminds me of what we were looking at for the most part, with Declan Rice when we first joined Arsenal. But eight years his junior. So, again, his passing ability is fantastic. He's got the stamina. He's quick. He's got the agility we're looking for. His anticipation off the ball is tremendous as well. Beautiful mental attributes. Highly athletic. 350 grand a week is a lot but remember we are not hurting for cash in this team normally i'd be looking at oh we paid 54 million we could get potentially 250 to 300 million oh my god give me all the money but again kieran o'malley is a fantastic midfielder and a great place for us to be in the middle of the pitch I guess one of the issues we are going to have to, or the questions, I should say, that we are going to have to address is what are we going to do on the right wing side because we've got some challenges there. First off, our primary starter is Ansu Fati, now 33 years old, 129 international caps, still looks to be a fairly solid player, although he doesn't quite have the pace that maybe he once did. His dribbling has gone down a little bit as well still very productive at 33 scoring 15 goals and adding six assists maybe we go out and get Gershke Akar he'd be a cheaper option on a weekly wage basis and we could probably buy him from Porto for what we could potentially get if we were to sell on Sufati now there is no current interest being shown doesn't mean that we cannot drop up any now the fans still love him he scored 72 goals in 161 appearances for PSG uh pretty much actually maybe even a little better than the pace when he was at Barcelona for 14 years scoring 104 goals in 245 appearances but if we can get somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 million for Ansu Fati I think that would be a very good piece of business for us and another piece we could move out leaving an opening for us to fill the reason it's an issue is because the options behind him may or may not be options there's the 22 year old slovakian maros toth decent player he still has a lot of growing he needs to do he was out on loan in the Schweizer Bundesliga last year with Dinamo Dresden seven goals three assists in 31 appearances not too bad for the 22 year old however 
just looking at his attributes, he just does not really stack up with where Fati is, even 11 years his senior. Marcus Toro, however, could potentially be the one to come in. Now, the only issue is he was out on loan last year to Monaco. They had an 80 million euro option on him, which has been exercised. Now, it's just an option, so it was an optional fee. We're only going to get about $42 million up front if we are to move forward. At 27 years old, he is getting up there. He's probably worth as much now as he ever will be. I mean, we got him from Atleti for $1.2 million, so that's a lot of profit, even though some of it is kind of kicked down the road. Do we decide to keep Toro if we move Fati on, or do we just resolve ourselves to finding a new right wing? Thought I'd give you a look at the guy that we were looking at at Porto, Alexandru Siusia. Now, he wanted too much money. He was making 185 grand a week here, so he never really was a possibility, but it was a bit of a pipe dream. His crossing could use a little bit of work. He's primarily an inverted wing back, which was a role that we were using at Porto, which made him so appealing to us only a pair of assists uh from the right back position last season he's still young 23 years old tremendous amount of value signed from Lech for 3.3 million he's worth over 150 now I mean maybe he's a piece that we look to move on who knows maybe Yvonne Fresneda just hangs out there although probably not I mean we got rid of him at Fulham for a reason standing at five foot ten he is a pacey back Decent tackling, decent marking. I mean, could be a little bit better on the defensive end, but he loves the big matches. Spirited personality, very technically gifted and physical player. The kind of guy that we have liked no matter where we have stopped on this journeyman so far. Another aging veteran that we are probably going to be looking for to uh, move on from. Another one where we can get a good return for our value. I mean, he's made 325 appearances for the club. Scored 80 goals. It is Javi Simons. Talked a little bit about him before. I mean, his first touch, you know, his mental attributes are all still very, very solid. But again, the pace beginning to drop doesn't really, isn't really good with the, with the whole heading thing. Standing at only five foot 10 but he's a very versatile player but again at his age even though the fans love him and he's still a leading player in the league we could stand to get a little bit younger and a little bit cheaper at that position same situation with uh, Nuno Mensch 33 years old as our left back doesn't quite have the pace that maybe he once did so fans love him great personality might be a good guy to keep around in the locker room haven't really yet a judge the leadership potential on this club yeah i mean he's not really like a team leader but he may be an influential player came over from sporting for 40 million he's worth about that now 393 appearances for the club so part of the issue that we may have with our fan base and potentially even the board is yes we do have a number of players that have been here for that are are aging but they have been here for a very very long time although looking at that 6.5 average rating in the last 20 matches he only made 27 starts in the league picked up one assist i don't know i mean i'm not like backing down from my normal stance i think i'd like to take a very similar transfer policy mentality here at PSG that we were taking at Porto maybe with slightly higher ceiling as far as weekly wages go but I think Nuno Mensch may have played his 393rd and final match at Paris Saint-Germain well goalkeeper is going to be a position that is one of desperate need here at PSG this is our best current goalkeeper who will be on the roster once the season ticks over in a couple of weeks. Mario De Luis, six foot one, 171 pounds, one single cap for Spain at 34 years old. Arrow reaches okay. Not really great in the one on ones. He's not really rated by our scouts as anything better than a League 2 player. So, yeah, we need to get better. Because even at 37, Donnarumma was still, still still, looked pretty good for the position. Obviously, his value dropped 
over the years, and he is set to retire. And he's, unfortunately for us, not the only one. Any thoughts of maybe falling back on Nicholas Heidel when he came back from his loan at Monaco are dashed because he is also retiring this offseason. Coming into a team where all three of your goalkeepers were aged 34 or older. Now, goalkeepers can hold on to their ability at a much later age than, say, a striker or a winger. However, that's that's still old. And we don't really have anybody, as far as I can tell, in the stable that is ready to step up. So the transfer market is going to be turning toward the very back of our back line. We're going to need a keeper. We are definitely going to need a keeper because I'm taking a look at our second team and our U19s and uh, Ali Gay, Javier Gilbert. I'm sorry. They ain't getting it done. What was that I was saying about older strikers? Gonzalo Ramos played 367 matches with PSG, scored 206 goals. Bully for him. But at 34, making 200 grand a week, we can definitely get younger and we can get stronger. We can get faster. It's also good to know that our director of youth development is doing a fairly decent job. Now, this is one for the far future. 15-year-old Brazilian Gildo Nakarati came in through our youth intake and he looks like he is going to be quite the sumptuous striker. Already standing at six foot one, 147 pounds. Hopefully, he is able to bulk himself up just a little bit, gain a bit more strength, work on some of his mental attributes. Although he is a highly determined player, so hopefully, he will be able to develop fairly quickly. A nice, resolute personality to go with it. He's consistent, he's got the flair, and could improve a ton. Very excited to see where he may end up in the next couple of years. More immediately, though, we are most likely going to be leaning on the shoulders of Jonah Kusi Asari. And that's going to be hard because those shoulders are quite high off the ground. Six foot six, 198 pounds. The Ghana Sweden dual national, already 63 caps, 24 international goals. He has scored a goal every other game throughout his short but rather illustrious PSG career, 27 goals in 50 appearances. He is physical and he is fantastic up front. We just need to find somebody to pair him with. I think we're going to start things off implementing the 4-2-4 that was so successful for us in Porto. Obviously, it wasn't successful for us against Manchester United. I've got to let that go. Especially if we take them on again this year, we'll be going against the PSG's former manager in Saul. We've already talked about that as well. Now we're going to need to find a goalkeeper, Tarasenko and Goas. We have not looked at Goas yet, so we will bring him up as a potential center back pairing. The 32-year-old from the Netherlands, capped 47 times uh, for the Dutch team. Wish he was a little bit quicker, a little bit taller, so I don't know if he's going to be sticking around. We will, we're will. we already doing a ton of scouting for center backs, so we might as well just apply it here. Don't know if we're going to get any bang for our buck. He's only made 62 appearances for PSG, obviously brought in as a more seasoned player, although very defensively sound. He is still a leading player, very consistent, great with his positioning, very balanced mentality. So we're not worried too many. Decent bravery, good decisions, concentration levels are actually very high. So maybe we do give him a chance and we don't look to move on, but we know that for the the future, either this season or next, we will need another center back, at least. As of right now, I've got Susha slotted in as our left back. He can play either left or right. Has a very strong left foot. He's accomplished in the position, so I feel comfortable putting him over there. We are going to slot in Ivan Fresneda on the right-hand side, but that is position with Ivan Fresneda in it that we know we want to improve upon. In the midfield right now, it's going to be Kieran O'Malley. He's going to be paired next to Giovanni Fernandez, the 28-year-old Brazil international. Amazing passing ability. His mental attributes, for the most part, are off the charts. Great personality, world-class player, great passing. All of that. The fans like him, too. So hopefully they will 
be able to deal with the loss of a player like Javi Simons. Torcado, we have already talked about on the left wing. Look who they signed last year. Only made four appearances, scored one goal, but Alejandro Garnacho at the ripe old age of 31 is a member of Paris Saint-Germain, and he is still one of the quickest wingers in the league. Can he do anything above and beyond that? We may find out. <laughs> I'm, I'm hedging my bets here because uh, I don't know how I feel about Alejandro Garnacho, considering we all know where he came from. Meanwhile, up top, Gregor Muirhead would be excellent in the position. He is a natural striker. Uh, I mean, false nine. I've never played with a false nine. Don't really look to start now, but he is a very good deep lying forward. He could play the advanced forward, so he can be in either role that we typically use up top. And he will be paired, of course, as we've already talked about, with Jonah Kusi Asari. Now, if we make any changes in any of these positions, obviously, we will let you know immediately. Meanwhile, one of the players we didn't talk about, and probably for good reason now, Paul Vonner, the 30-year-old German-Austrian dual national, he wants a new challenge, and he's unhappy. If you're unhappy, I don't want you. I also probably, just spitballing here, don't want your 550,000 euro per week salary as an albatross around our neck. Vonner, we're going to offer you out for sale. we got a lot of stuff to work on, a lot to process, and obviously this transfer special took on an entirely different dimension than the one we intended to when I first hit record. We will be back tomorrow to see what changes we have been able to affect here at the League on super giant Paris Saint Germain. Could this be the club where we see our greatest level of success and where we get to the pinnacle of European football? I sure do hope so. Make sure you hit like on this video because I'm sure there is something in it today that you thoroughly enjoyed. Also, make sure to subscribe, drop a comment, let me know what you think about the move to PSG. And tomorrow, we'll get ready to start our first season ever in France as we take on League One and Champions League competition. I hope to see you then. Till tomorrow, bye-bye.